Welcome back to Loud Silence Radio and TV. My name is Kevin Ekobedu Taylor. This is the extended version of Without Your Respect. We told you we're going to have an exclusive interview with Solomon Ousu. Um, if you don't know Solomon Ousu, then you don't know about Galamse. You don't know about mining. You don't know about small scale mining in Ghana. He has been a champion. He's been fighting for Ghanaians, fighting for locals, fighting for Ghanaians to know the truth about what is happening underground what is happening behind the scenes when it comes to this government fighting against galamsey he is in the studio now i'm going to introduce him have a serious conversation with him because lots and lots of things are happening in ghana today solomon Ousu, welcome to the show solomon Ousu is in the show so which is here you know the funny thing the funny thing is this is the first time this is the first time that i have met solomon Ousu. sure it's and uh, it is it is shocking, right? <laughs> People think that oh, these guys they are Paris, oh, they are Galamse boys from, from Boise. <laughs> but you see, we say we are from Boise. People don't know. They think we just oh, make it up. Yeah, Boise is big, so yeah. And uh, and Solomon knows of Boise. I know of Boise. You see, Solomon, uh, Solo. Uh, so uh, let's tell people how we know of Boise. So from from Tutuka, <laughs> then you go to where? Are you coming? You, you go into a Boise town. Town. Yeah. From Tutuka, then you go to. Cobra Fosu. For Cobra Fosu, then, then you... you go to so so from Cobra Fosu to Wawas. Wawas. From Wawas to S T. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah. Before you go to Wawas, there is a, a, a town, a small town, the right side called Anime Duku. Anime Duku. That's where the whole thing <laughs> happened. That place. That Anime Duku. Anime Duku. Then you go to a so small place. You join today. <laughs> then you go forward a bit, and on your right, the P T P. P uh, on the right. On the gold right. Gold finger. Gold. No gold finger. You oh, you don't know that. Okay, okay, okay. Go, I'm going too fast. You go forward small from Saint Joseph School. Yeah. You go to AGC Club. Okay. On your left, that is Wawase proper. Wawase proper. Then Under the far, convict. far left is Kriki. Kriki. Then you go forward. Convict. Then you go to uh, the runabout. Yeah. That is where we yeah. have. No, yeah. you you pass through the convey. Yeah. Then you go Fogun. You go Fogun. Fogun is the main. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's where people used to pick the buses to <laughs> whatever to the shops and all shops. that. Yeah. Yeah. Then. You go forward small. You see the Methodist Church, uh, Roman Church. Ro no, down. Roman Roma is down. down oh. but, uh, and the, the Standard Chartered Bank is opposite yeah, the Methodist Church. Standard Chartered yeah. Commercial Bank. Yeah, yeah. That's where the statue forward. is. You remember that statue? The statue. That's the roundabout. That's the roundabout. Then right there is post office. Then you go down a little bit. Then Central market. Central market. Central market. Then the Central market. Then, then, then you go there. Then you go to Auntie Julie's Clinic. Then you go to Auntie B. Auntie B. Auntie B. Auntie B is my school. Yeah, Auntie B school. But in the market itself, there's a story building. It could be Auntie. Something clinic in the uh, market. No ice cream can be ordered. So ice cream can join. Some ice cream can be very thick. Where there is there is a, a taxi <laughs> rank. There's a taxi. And you name taxi rank. And you name taxi rank. So long you are a G. Then you go forward. You go Mangwasi. <laughs> <laughs> so the against people who are watching us today, we know we know the town. We are not just. You think we are in America, so we forgotten our. No 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 no. no, 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 no. no we no, we don't forget. We so. know our roots. Man. We know our roots. That's the thing. So. Uh, people, I see people are writing so many things. There's a lot of people <laughs> online now. They're shocked. They're shocked. Yeah. Solo is here, and uh, we are going to have a serious discussion. Today, we're going to be talking about Galamse. The, the question is simple. The, the, the topic is, have we lost the fight against Galamse? Have we, as a country, have we lost the fight? Yeah, obviously, everybody knows we've lost the fight. And then the evidence. Yeah. Do you have the, the first there? evidence? Oh, okay. Yeah, you can use the headphones. Yeah. Yeah, you can go on. Yeah. So the first evidence is the fact that the Ghana Water Company mm -hmm. came out. Yeah. To say, hey, we are going to shut our plants because we cannot use the polluted water mm -hmm. to generate the water that we need to drink. Yeah. And use for other purposes. That is the first evidence. The second evidence is the fact that. Uh, the equipment, especially the excavators, yeah. that were seized, were rather instead of, you know, making it uh, locate at where we need to keep wait, them. keep them, yeah. and wait and do investigations. They send it back to the Galamse site. So it's like everything was cyclic. Yeah. Instead of addressing the issues, yeah, they were Going addressing around. money. We're addressing money, money yeah, instead yeah. of issues. So, and we have a lot to talk about. That. So as a mining engineer, um, and God being so good, you grew up in a mining community. You know, I'm going to let you explain the types of mining. Because, you know, some people get it wrong. 
Oh, is, is Galamse the same as small scale mining? Is small scale mining as the same as uh, B scale? You know, so before we start the conversation, let our viewers or listeners know the difference between the, the kind of mining. Thank you. You know, when you talk of mining, yeah, we have small scale mining. Let me start from artisanal mining. Okay. Where we don't use the sophisticated equipment to mine, like excavators, bulldozers, no, we don't use them. So that is artisanal mining. Yeah. But do you know I've done artisanal mine before? Oh, me too. Obwasi. Shankin, no. shankin, shankin. 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 <laughs> shankin. You see, you when see, you put a, the, 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 you, they, they build a small table, the water passes through it, you shake it. It's, it's called shankin. Let me explain to you. Explain to me. <laughs> <laughs> and give you the terminology. <laughs> all right, all right. They have a wooden structure, tilted like this, called spools. Spools. So the spools, we put blanket on it. And then we wash the oil yeah, from the top. From the top. You know, gold is heavy. So as it's moving with the water, the metal gold will be left stuck on the on the blanket. And yeah. left on the blanket. And then the ordinary sand will wash away. That is why after we remove the blanket, wash it in the, the bucket, shankin. then the gold will concentrate in the bucket. Then we use mercury to pick it out. To pick it out. So That's the artisan uh, uh, artisana. Okay. And then we have the small scale mining. Okay. That is where it started from I think 2004, 2005 that way. Yeah. That they use excavators, doses to mine instead of small, you know, artisanal small way, yeah. they mine it in a large in way. Large. But it's not up to the major mine, which is the large scale, like Gofalls. Mm -hmm. Newmont, Anglo Gold, and all that, they operate large scale. So we have the artisanal, small scale, and large scale. The artisanal is informal. Okay. It is illegal. That is the Galamse. That's the Galamse. And then the small scale is the license mining in a, you know, between the artisanal and the large scale. Okay. Yeah, let me put it that way for people who want to know. So the large scale is the one that's Anglo Gold Ashanti, so Takwa, Mazda, yeah. Okay. And then in the operations, that's mm -hmm. the type. But the operations, we have the surface mine, the underground mine, and the alluvia. Three. Mm -hmm. The alluvia is the one they do in the water body, which is banned in Ghana. Okay. But the Chinese guys are still engaging it. in it. That is why our you know water bodies are polluted. I'm telling okay. you. And they put all sort of chemicals, cyanide, mercury, and they generate acid. You know, uh, in in the process, it generates arsenic and some sulfides. So fishes cannot live in that water, in that polluted water. Yo, so and then, mm -hmm. when it comes to the large scale, they do it in a more formalized way. The large scale, go for they build their plants, they reclaim the lands, they make sure the cyanide that they use is not you know drained into our water bodies and all that. Mm -hmm. And there are. Um, rules and regulations and international bodies watch and they go to assess their performance and give them certification. Okay. And they use that certification for loans and all that and they convince investors that they are mining in environmentally friendly manner. Unlike the artisan and then the small scale that we don't have any regulatory body mm -hmm. that goes there to check what they are doing. So this brings the question, this brings the question, what is the difference when the government actually came out to say that there's a ban on mining, mm -hmm. was it was a blanket on all mining or small scale? So that's where people started getting confused. Sure. Was the ban on small scale or was on all, all mining. mining activities? Yeah. Because I'm saying this because we are going to talk about the, the report that Bloomberg brought out sure, sure. saying that small scale miners produce 2 million ounces of gold. Sure. So that's why I'm asking you this question. Yeah, thank you. And if my producer is listening, you can put that 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 um, document uh, about a chart on the screen so that Solo can explain it well. Sure, thank you. Um, in 2017, around March, yeah, the government and then the minister in charge, Honorable Peter Mewu, made the announcement mm. that they were going to put a ban on illegal mining, Galamse and small scale mining is that two oh, things two so the last scale were exempted okay like the gold anglo gold and all that they yeah. were producing yeah but 
any small scale, whether registered or unregistered, mm. and illegal mining activities were all banned. But Shanzi mine, mm -hmm. example, Shanzi mine in Talency, that has killed a lot of Ghanaians. Yeah, I saw some pictures. They were mining. And the government can challenge me on this. I have evidence to prove that they had mined since the bomb. And mm. nobody talked about 2017. it. 2017. And it was registered under small scale mining category in Ghana. Go to Minerals Commission, it is there. I have, I have the evidence. So why should you bind all Ghanaians from operating small scale mining? But allow the Chinese guys in Talansi, allow Chinese guys in our forest, Cobra Forest, just during the ban, they were arresting them, right? Yeah. Aisha one and all that, and they were left off the hook. I was asking that if anyone has seen any Chinese in any of our prisons today, they should let us know. Because we know that lots and lots of Chinese were arrested. None of them. Yeah. I, look, I've monitored this from 2017. Okay. That's why I've been fighting. Yeah. None of them is in jail. Professor Frimpong, what things should come and prove to me that a court has jailed any Chinese guy in that. I have documents. That's terrible. None of them is in jail, but we have Ghanaians who are in jail. You see, the most uh, surprising thing is, last two weeks, a guy was arrested on December 20th yeah. in Ashanti region using pickers and shovel to mine what what is it pickers and shovel to prospect for gold but it was in a mining concession a last scale mining okay. concession they reported and they arrested him for engaging in illegal mining december 20th just last week they jailed the guy my Ghanaian. meanwhile we have arrested lots of chinese guys they are working freely so the question is do we have laws mm -hmm. That protect, well, that Chinese. protect the Chinese guys yeah. and also have different laws that allow Ghanaians to go to jail. That is where I find difficulties with this government. Mm. But they, they, you see, somewhat to raise an issue that when it comes to Galamsey or our water bodies getting destroyed, it didn't start today. Even In fact, before you came, I was trying to tell people that it started all the way from Rollins' time. No Rollins time. Before that. Vocals time. Yeah, okay. So let's ask ourselves. Yeah. The time that the whites were bringing schnapps to come and take wood. It was Galamsea. Yeah. 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 So, so somebody. Using to, yeah. So, you know, to give them good. Some, and then they give them the schnapps, they drink, they get intoxicated, yeah. and, and they take our guys for <laughs> some, some people to say you are being too hard on the government be, for no reason because this problem has been there since. It's, it didn't start today. Um, Galamsea. Uh, our water bodies getting affected it's been there it's not um a kufuado who created this uh, and it wasn't created like three years ago we we saw how galamsey uh, affected our, our our country rolling's time Kufuado's time um atamil's time all the way to mahama's time and now it's a kufuado's time maybe maybe people have a, a bigger issue with the kufuado because he ran on that to win elections but my question is why are you so do you why do you have so much problem with this government when it comes to Galamsey? Because they didn't start it. They said they were going to, in fact, eliminate it or stop it. Yeah, this is a punch question. Punch, punch question to me. Yeah. You see me thinking. I know you're thinking. All right. Yeah. Now, it's simple. President Ekufuado, then candidate Ekufuado. Yeah. I campaigned for him. I've never campaigned for President Mahama. I've never campaigned for President Atanos. Is it? Yes, yeah, fine. President Atanos. I campaigned for President Kufo yeah. when I was in school. We all did. We all did. But that time I wasn't into you so, know deep yeah. politics like today. But for President Kufuado, I campaigned for him on small scale mining and Galamse. Mm. From that angle, one, you remember in 2013. Yeah. Then Minister of Lands and Natural Resources, uh, Inu Safuseni, mm -hmm. used the military way to chase the small scale miners and the and the Galamse guys, seize their excavators and all that. Yeah. I have I have information on that. So I used that to wash up these small scale miners, called them. Look, I was not sleeping during the 2015 2016 campaign. Yeah. Apart from that, President Kufuadu went to Dunkwao and declared that. The NDC people were saying that 
uh, in case he won the election, he was going to, you know, uh, put a ban on Galamse. That wasn't true. He would allow them to work and make sure they work in environmentally friendly manner. Yeah. That's what he said. And he said it in three. And everybody has the tape. That is number two. Number three, what you are doing now, I was doing in 2015, 2016. Mm -hmm. I'm now the radio in Denver, Colorado. Yeah. Everybody knows. I was bashing President Mahama, not insulting, no, mm -hmm. but campaigning against President Mahama on Galamse. Look, during that time, if anybody called in and then started insulting, I cut the person off. Yeah. I was not insulting anybody. I was not attacking anybody. I had never attacked anybody until then people started attacking me. That is when I started attacking them. Now, let me go back to the, the question. Yeah, the question. So, if I campaigned for President Tekufuado and convinced the small scale miners that I knew that, look, and you know, I have pictures with Nanado, I have pictures with Dr. Oh, yeah, Baumia, yeah, yeah. and I was using that one as a fulcrum to convince them that I've got meeting with them, and they all agreed that we, the mining experts, the mining engineers yeah, in the United States, yeah. we, we all come and help you sanitize yeah. the system and all that. Look, I will not say because of my campaign, that's why they voted for Nanado. Okay. But they saw the need for change. Yeah. A change, a positive change in their profession, a, a positive change in the work that they do, that gives them their daily bread. Yeah. So they change. When you came, instead of making sure the right things are done, the worst things are done. Do you want me to support that? When you say the worst things are done, uh, Ikufar is not sitting here. So sometimes you need to let people understand when you say the worst things are being done. What are the worst things you're talking about? Good. I'll come to that. You know, as... But no, we just started. Yeah, have we just started. We just started. Yeah. You're still listening to Loud Silence Radio and TV. <laughs> My guest here in the studio is Solomon Obusu. He's a mining engineer. He's Ghanaian based in Denver, Colorado. He's here in the studios with me. We're discussing Galamse. We'll be coming to the main topic, which is the missing excavators. <laughs> but uh, you know, if you are a 90s kid, you will not understand. This is comedies. We are doing the comedies before we go into the main action. So, Solomon, you can you can go on. You see. Should we start with the missing? Uh, no, no, no. Let's 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 do Galamse now. Let's okay. You know the president started the Galamse sanitization, yeah. Galamse fight, and all that with Kenashibe and all that from March 2017. And then Honorable Peter Mewu was doing very well. Mm. So in June. They established the interministerial committee yeah. on With Charles Bissu and all that in there. With 10 ministers mm. and Charles Bissu as the secretary to the committee. Okay. Headed by the Minister for Science, Environment, and then is it technology, mm. Professor Kobana from Pombati. Okay. Information that I have indicate that before Mr. Mewu handed over the fight to Professor Frimpon Boatin, he handed 525 excavators. 525? 525. Let's take, just put it down. Okay. 525 excavators. Professor Frimpon Boatin can come out and challenge me. He said, okay, take this. Continue the fight. And we also excavators seized. And over yeah. 1,000 excavators have been seized. So if he comes now to say, hey, so before, before uh, Amewu left, he left 525, 525 excavators. To and they seized more after Amewu left. They seized more after so that. So even 500 is less. Oh, that is why the, uh, the Ashanti Regional Secretary of the Ghana Mine Small Scale Association yeah. Association said, if he were there, he would, you know, take the paper and trash it. Because it's not even 500. It's, it's more than five. It's even more than 1,000. I'm telling you. Yeah. So if somebody handed over... 525 within three months to you and you've been there for more than two years yeah what i trying to tell yeah. us yeah because because galamse was ongoing and we On saw them we saw every, every day uh, every day arrest yeah. every day and these are things people didn't think about okay now we will come to the you know the missing excavators let me no you go there we go there yeah <laughs> <laughs> so when professor frimpo watin started the work mm. i don't know whether they set KPIs for him, key performance indicators for him. Okay. Everybody knew that the purpose of that interministerial committee to make sure that 
better policies are put in place. Right. The reason why I use better is that there was a policy before, before, before. 2006, something like that, right? Yes, yes. Mining, I have it. The here. Mining Act 2006. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and I'll, I'll read that. To Mineral people. and Mining Act. Oh, no, let the, let the producer put it on it. Yeah. Mineral and Mining Act yeah. 2006. At 703 is yeah. I have it. And I've I've, I've yeah, gone my through like will, 10 yeah. times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's there. So now I remember this very well. When they are talking, they talk as if there wasn't any law. There was a law. And they have come. You know that Professor Rimpon made a, a, a comment on the Asempa FM. And when we came, we were initially deporting the Chinese, Chinese. guys. Mm -hmm. But President Kufwadi came out with a law that if you are arrested, you will go to jail 15 to 25, to 25 years. years. Yeah. That day I was shocked. So does it mean the man didn't know there about was the act? Mineral Act 2006? Oh, forgive him. Maybe he's a scientist. <laughs> he didn't read it. Scientist. He's a scientist. He's a surgeon. He's not a scientist. Oh, oh okay, okay. He's okay. a surgeon. Scientists are those astronauts and those. <laughs> he's just a surgeon, right? I'm an engineer. Okay, okay. He's, so he's a surgeon. He's a surgeon. Okay, that's a good question. When it comes to, you know, human hearts and all that, yeah, he's perfect. Expert. Yes. <laughs> or maybe Gao. Or maybe Gao. But as a professor or as an academician, yeah. any responsibility that is given to you, you should be able to read about. That's very, it. very important. That discipline. You need to read about it and know. And understand. And understand it before you even start the work. That day I saw that the man doesn't have a clue about what he's doing. I'm telling you. There was an act. 2006. And he showed me. Yeah. And look, let me first read where he says that, you know, it talks about the punishment. Very good. It's, it's right here. Please. Read for everybody. I will not read. You read. All right. So um, this is the Mining Act 2006. Um, a Act person, a 2A. Uh, it's a section 99 2A to B. Section 99 2A to B. I'm reading from 2A. It says, a person who, A, without a license granted by the minister and takes a small scale mining operation contrary to section 1, or B, acts in contravention of provision of this act in respect of which an offense has not been specified, commits an offense and is liable on summary conviction to a minimum fine of 1,000 penalty units or to imprisonment for a term not more than three years or, or, both. or both. So you could be charged with both. Yes. And this act was there 2006. Six. Okay. <laughs> so, the, the, you know, they are now portraying as if, I mean, if you portray as if you just came up with a law to imprison people. That's why you left Asha and all that. I don't take it. I don't understand it. You see? So, when Professor Frimpo Mbwatin started, he was supposed to manage the committee to ensure that better policies are put in place mm -hmm. to improve on the existing one mm -hmm. and also to ensure that the guys are monitored and they operate in environmentally friendly manner to protect our lands yeah. and prevent our water bodies from getting polluted. That's 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 number two. Yeah. Number three, to ensure safety. Because some go underground, yeah, they, they get killed. Yeah. Do you know last week some people about six people or so get killed around the Doma area no. on Galamsey? Oh, you, you, they don't report these you, things. You, you, don't, you don't follow. I have all the documents there. The point is, all this has Professor Frimpon Boatin achieved even one of them. All the three things you stated. Water pollution, land degradation, safety, health, environment, and all that. No. No. No, he hasn't. So now, why should we still keep that man there? Or keep the interministerial there. It is a useless interministerial committee. And, I, and the most useless committee ever set by any president in the history of Ghana is the interministerial committee of illegal mining. And this brings me to their secretary. <laughs> their secretary, who is Charles Bisu, was caught on camera taking bribes. And we all saw, not bribe, bribes. And we all saw this. And I was cutting the president a slack. I was like, okay, this guy has been seen on camera doing this. Now the president 
for what we know, has good plans. He loves Ghana. He's putting in place policies that will protect the citizens. So what is the president going to do about it? The first time I saw the video, I didn't have any doubt in my mind that the president was going to fire this boy and tell him never to come close to his government. Now, as we know, Charles Bissou is yet to be charged with anything. As we sit, speak now, Charles Bissou is still a government appointee. Now, what signal does it send to the small-scale miners who have lost the excavators and the investors and the inter basically international community? Thank you. The answer is simple. The president has done nothing about it and he's not going to do anything about it. Mm. That is the simple answer. Now, let Are you sure? <laughs> now, let me explain. Okay. Do you remember that when Anas brought the footage out, yeah. you know, publicized the footage, uh, the MPP people came out yeah. that they needed the raw footage and then Anas <laughs> sent the raw, the raw footage, footage yeah. to the special prosecutor. prosecutor right? In a few weeks, the interministerial committee head, Professor Frimpon Boateng and the rest, they also reported to the CID. Come on. And then the CID, after some month, cleared Charles Bissou. While the special prosecutor had not finished his investigations. Finished his investigations. Where are we heading to? Why did President Tekufuado instituted the special prosecutor in the first place? If you don't trust him and you bypass him to go to the CID for another investigation, why do you even set the interminis? Uh, the, the special prosecutor's in, office. Yeah, in the first place. Because Martin Amidu came out to say he was still investigating and he was going to make sure the writing was done. As at now, yeah. we haven't heard anything from the special prosecutor. But Charles Bissou has been cleared by the CID. He's still taking salary. Do you think the president is willing to punish Charles Bissou? I don't think so. In my editorial, I was telling Ghanaians. So that's why I gave a simple answer. He has done nothing. And he's going to do nothing. <laughs> You're still listening to Loud Silence Radio and TV. My name is Kevin Ekobedu. Tell I'm still in the studios here with Solomon Owusu. He's a mining engineer. He's based in Denver, Colorado. He's been speaking up against um, mining. He's been speaking up against some of the policies and the direction of the government. Today, he's here. We are discussing Galamsey. Our focus will be on the missing excavators. Um, I think we can do the excavators now. Uh, let me... Talk a little bit about uh, the frustrations that the miners have gone through yeah. and all that before we go through. Um, you know, the small scale miners. Yeah. I'll use this uh, opportunity to express um, my unflinching support that I have with them. Yeah. I have for them. And then also state categorically that those who have lost their lives through the atrocities that they've gone through, through the frustrations that they've gone through, through the poverty, some have wallowed in poverty mm. to the point that you can never imagine. Look, small-scale mining is a license operation like quarry. Mm like any other business business in Ghana. Yeah. The guys went through the process, acquired their licenses from the Minerals Commission legally. Signed by the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources legally. Yeah. And then based on that, they went to the bank to take a loan. Mm. How much is one excavator? Over 55,000. Five hundred and fifty thousand. Five hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Not Ghana cities. Five hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Dollars. I uh, buy if it's fifty-five thousand, like Lord anyone can Ghana. buy. <laughs> but five hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And they selling it for fifty thousand Ghana cities. Yes. Uh, but if you get something cheap, you sell it cheap. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Maza, yeah. have you gone to Kumasi? Before. No, no, cheap, cheap, uh, <laughs> easy, bro. Yeah, yeah, easy. Rock the it top up to there where they used to have the Kofor bars to Abuasi. Uh -huh. the top there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Easy, yeah. bro, easy. <laughs> so the point is, if we have even 500 excavators, like the way Professor Frimpo Boatin said, yeah. multiply by $550,000. You are talking about $250 million. Hmm. So if people have 
can have money to buy such excavators. That should tell you it's not a joke. It's a business. Money business. Profitable business. It's true. Now, these people borrowed money from the bank, started their operations, they were working. And they gave them rules to follow. That is why I also have problems with the Lansing Small Scale Mines. Yeah. They didn't follow the rules. So the ban, to me, they could do it in a way to train them or to monitor them to do the right thing yeah. while they charge them to use their own doses and excavators on site to cover the pits, do reclamation. You know, if I say, you know, uh, reclamation, reclaiming the land and all yeah, that. Reclaiming yeah, reclaiming the land. You, you 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 can you know you know plant trees and all that so that our environment or our lands will not be degraded now they didn't do it you put a ban you gave them six months after the six months you didn't have solution you gave them another you know three months no solution you made it indefinite <laughs> two years still no solution <laughs> two years after that December 14th, it was Friday, December 14th, 2018, they lifted the ban. And then it took effect from Monday, December 17th. That is where they published those who could mine, those who could not mine. mine. Yeah. After that, we all thought once the ban is lifted, there are structures in place to protect our environment. There are days they, they can get their licenses and all that. From 2018, December, up to now, most of the small-scale miners are home unemployed still. Why? Their ban is lifted. They were mining. You revoked their licenses. You said you are going to make sure the writing is done. And that Now they can't mine again. They ask, they, look, they send me messages and... That's but some people are mining. Every some, day. What I know is there are some people who are mining now. And on this show, I don't hide. Chema to me is mining. Oh. Chema to me is mining. And I know. Lots of fact. Look, lots of small scale miners in Ghana are MPP people. I'm telling you today. May I know most Majority of, of the Majority of them are MPP. And they sponsor the party at the local level, constituency level, polling station level. They sponsor the party. John Bodu and Chairman Fred Blake can come and challenge me on yeah. this because I was camp I was campaigning for Anado on Galamsey and I know what people did. Yeah. So now it's not that we can make it work. Mm -hmm. We can make it work in such a way that they can mine in environmental friendly manner. But you people are not ready to. No, so what to is stopping to the government from making the small scale miners who have? The right documents to mine because they had the documents before the ban was placed on it. Frustration. The answer is frustration from the government. They are frustrating them and allowing their cronies to mine. The That's Chinese all. and their cronies to mine, and that is what is happening. Why should you seize an excavator and send it to another site if you don't know the person on that side? Who How would you send it there? I mean, this is simple. Nobody should argue on this. Yeah. And you know, it's pathetic. Yeah. That we thought Nane Kufuado was coming to make sure the rule of law, law works. works. Now what do we see? Nothing works in Ghana. It will surprise you that, oh, we have arrested El Oh, we have arrested Joe. No, they all, go home. Oh, they all go home. I was saying on my editorial that these guys are the tiniest fish. The big fish are there. It has just started. No, oh, don't worry. Just relax. Like, we'll go there. <laughs> Look, today, <laughs> today the stories we'll, will come. We'll, we'll go slow. Yeah, yeah. You're still listening to Loud Silence Radio and TV. My name is Kevin Ekobe. Do tell I'm your host. And my guest in the studio is Solomon Owusu. Solomon Owusu is Ghanaian, like myself. He loves Ghana. He has learned um, mining. He's a mining engineer. He b he's based in um, Denver and Colorado. We're discussing Galamsey in Ghana. We were talking about the missing excavators. On Monday, I released an episode on the missing ex excavators. People are being arrested. Journalists are speaking. People in government, some are hiding. Others are not. We are now locating where some of the excavators are. We are selling excavators, which is supposed to be sold, which is being sold on market for over $550,000 to 50 
uh, for fifty thousand dollars for people. This is where we are now as a country. You're still listening to this show. This is where you can separate facts from noise. Here, we don't mince words. Here, we tell you the truth. We are not going to hide behind the scenes and be like, oh, say, say, this one, don't say it. We say it. When the name is there, we're going to mention it. And if you don't like us, go out somewhere else and go watch what you think will please you. Solomon is still in the studio, boss. We're going to be, we, we are about to start a second part of this show. And the second part of this show is the missing excavators. The news broke out. I actually did a story. Before then, can, I mean, can we still break, shit break. and then and then I go to the two million and so or you want to talk no, about let's talk about million. that. Let's talk about it. so on that report First, before this Bloomberg re re released that Ghana um we have produced two point six million in total and that small scale miners uh, four point six four point six total. and small scale miners actually produced two, two million. million. Now, in 2008, in alone. 2018, 18, 18 alone. alone. Now, we know that the, the ban started in March 2017, all the way to December 17, 20, 2018. 18. So, technically, there was no mining activity happening the whole year, yes, the whole year. Yes. Small scale miners with license, those without license, Galam say nothing was happening. So, the question is, and the question is, who are the people? <laughs> Who came up with the two million ounces? Where because the not the minerals commission and the, the 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 data should come from somewhere, and then they have recorded it and reported it and exported it. So we should know that something happened. The question is, as a mining engineer and from your investigations and your research and all that, where do you think Ghana, without mining the small scale miners being home, were able to get two million ounces? That's. I mean that is simple. Some people mind. Yeah. Before then, can the producer show the video that the Facebook somebody put on his Facebook wall, melting gold mm. and pouring gold? Can can um, pass? Yeah, yeah. I think he and, he, he, he and that will summarize the whole thing. That is Joe 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 from Pom Watin, the second born, the second son of yeah. Professor from Pom Watin. He who, has a concession. Who is the head? Of the interministerial committee on illegal mining, who mm -hmm. is supposed to make sure that nobody mines. Yeah. The sun was busily mining and then pouring gold. Now, after the video, put the document from Minerals Commission. Yeah, producer, if you have that document, there's the, 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 the that document, a document the, yeah. from Minerals Commission, that's Jojo from Paul Watkins Company, Symphony Mining. Yeah. Had requested for some concessions, and then Professor Kwabna from Pomp Watin himself, underneath director, he signed <laughs> and wrote director. And it, and you know why I got to know that it is his company. No, his cell phone number. He put his cell phone number. It, so it, zoom yeah, for the, everybody the, the, yeah, to see the yeah, cell phone yeah. number. I have it on my phone. I know his cell phone number, and that is Professor Kwabna from Paul Watkins, director of Symphony Mining Company, and the son is CEO. Yeah, the document is on it. Yes. So that should tell that the person who is supposed to make sure the mining thing is, is, is done correctly, he owns a mining company. Yeah. So if you if you if you look at the document, you see zero two four four. Very good. Three three. Zero zero four nine. You can call Professor right now. Uh, is there, uh, if you are there, you can call Professor and then uh, ask Professor, is this your number? Is it your number? Professor, <laughs> don't turn the phone off. I know you are watching with a different account. So if you are watching us now, you can call Professor from Pom what is that is his number. Uh, yeah, cell phone his number. Cell phone number is zero two four four. And then zoom the document three three mine zero zero four nine. He signed a document for his son to mine whilst the ban was in no 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 this is not for mine this is concession oh this is for the concession and then for exploration or something no oh, okay now 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 let me tell you the funny thing if you say somebody is a director of a company mm -hmm. who is that person he's the head of the company he's the owner yeah right yeah that's why directors of com board of directors are yeah. the owners of, of company the, yeah i have my company you're the director and i'm the director yeah of the yeah of the company mm. so if somebody writes and say director then that is his company and his son he has used his son as the ceo that is that is the mm. truth that is but why are these people doing this to ghanian good it's there the document is no there. no it's, it's on the screen. now after these two documents can you show the one that i sent when i was on my way coming 
Uh, Joe Joffrey, Pom, what is yeah. standing? You can show the pictures, producer. Yes. Yeah. So with gold, good, with gold sacks and all gold, that. Uh, and uh, uh, all sacks, no gold. All sacks. All sacks. Mm. So that should tell you that the gold in, in the, the oil was the one that he was refining, extracting, processing, melting, yeah. melting. That is that is. Yeah. Only these three documents are enough to justify that something went wrong. And after that, I will come to the gold export. Yeah. Now, yeah. Is it done? Yeah. Let's, <laughs> keep let's keep going. Yeah. The pictures are flowing, so it's fine. Very good. He had a plant, trucks. It architecture. So where that confusion came recently, that the the Galam Sap Operation Vanguard people went to beat the guys and all. We will that. talk about this Operation Vanguard people. Good. We will talk about them. That is architecture. That is the site. Jojo Frimpon Boatin, the son of Professor Frimpon Boatin. Now, the question is, these are all 2007-2008 videos and pictures. 2017-2018. Yes. Yeah. So now, the question is, who mined that exported gold? Two million ounces. Ounces of gold. Have they answered that question? Uh, do you remember when I flew to... Yeah, to, to New Jersey. New Jersey. To we're going to ask the question. Yeah. When you ask that question... Ask the question the president said he, he, he had no idea he would go to Ghana and, and check and check. As at now, nobody has said anything, my brother. So is President Tekufado ready to fight corruption? He's not. This, this is, is he ready to fight cut. Galam? Say, that is why I find difficulties. That is why people think I'm trying to be hard on my own previous party. I will not say my party, previous party. <laughs> <laughs> because you can't tell me you do A and you come, you do B. No, yeah. that is not the reason why I campaign for you. And I'll make sure I'll put you on your toes. And that's what I'm doing. So, so now let's take this slowly. Now, let's go back to the gold export. I'm interested in that. Yeah. Two million ounces of gold from small-scale mining. Yeah. 2.6 million ounces from large-scale. If you say large-scale, look at the all produced by Gophos. Yeah. All produced by Anglo Gold. Mm -hmm. All produced by Newmont. Uh, a Swiss a mine, Sanko mine, and a all Sanko those, yeah. mine, Golden Star Resources, yeah. Adamus Resources in Zima, Konongo. There's a mine there in Konongo, yeah. Oware, Oware or, yeah. re, 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 um, uh, Resources, and then what else? Okay, let, let me just mention this few. All these companies produce all, all together, these big all guys, all these big guys produce 2.6 million ounces. All these big companies, all, all these companies, these, the, the whole devil, <laughs> the whole devil, and then. Small scale and artisanal alone produce two million. That should tell you the quantum of gold, gold that yeah, was you yeah, know, mined mine, from small, small scale, scale mining yeah. operations. Because you see, those companies you mentioned, Anglo Gold Ashanti, Asanko, they have bigger equipment. Yeah, we grew up in the mining. No, no, I didn't just grow up in Le You did you did no, you did. no. <laughs> I was born in Obwasi. Yeah. <laughs> Had my primary education. Is it Obwasi? Secondary school Obwasi sector. Sec -tech. Oh no, oh man. <laughs> Obwasi sector. Then my first degree, Takwa. Mine, just close. University of Mines and Tech. Yeah, Two I, hour drive. Yeah, yeah. During our, our, our time, it was KNUST School of Mine. We were admitted in Tech and then sent to Takwa. To Takwa. After that, I work in Takwa. So all my life, I've lived in mining areas. Yeah. New Mexico Tech, where I did my master's, mining town. Yeah. So you're a, you're that, a mining guru. After that, I went to, 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 to work in mines in arizona and nevada all mining towns yeah then back to colorado that is the hub of oh, mining okay. <laughs> in the united in the states the whole united states yeah. so that should tell you that me i'm a miner yeah so i'm working so both surface shocking. and underground operation yeah. and also galam say you know, yeah shaking. yeah, yeah. <laughs> shaking, shaking. <laughs> so it, it's funny because these are bigger companies and yes. they put a lot of effort before yes. they get even all gold sure and then if all together because 2.6. 2.6. The reports are there. And Bloomberg generated the data from, from the Ghana Chamber people. of Mines. So, who, where did they get the 2.6, <laughs> the 2 million ounces? 2 houses? million ounces. Small scale and artisanal. That is, that is a big question that President Tekufadu should investigate. Look, and that 2 million ounces of gold is about 2.6 billion united states dollars no million who took the money b for ball b for ball billion united states dollars convert it to ghana city it's ridiculous because that it means some people make that money 
ah. personally. Oh. And these are not things that we have yeah. to just smile about and walk over. As example is what they saw on the TV. Man. If there was a ban and somebody mine and you know, you know, processing or then that should tell you that some people mine, right? No, you see, and I'm gonna do another piece on this. <laughs> two million ounces. About two oh, the, even the, the ounces is not important. Uh, the, 2.6 billion. 2.6 billion United States dollars. dollars. And do you know the funny thing? When the Chinese people gave it the Sanohydro 2 billion, the whole world heard about it. Sanohydro. Yeah, Sanohydro. 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 Two, Sanohydro. Two, 2 billion. Meanwhile, small small by 6 billion have been exported. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that should tell you that we are, we we are, are not jokers. No, yeah. That is why, right from day one, you see, if Tamewu had been kept at the ministry. ministry and no useless interministerial committee or something Set up. by this time. By now, this honestly, time. when Amewu was there, <laughs> we saw glimpses of some of the water color changes. Yes, yeah, and I'm, I'm going to be And he was honest. going to the field. He was not like a surgery person who always relies in the office, you know, studies report and writes. No, no, no. no. Amewu was wearing helmet, mm. boots. Jeans, lances, going to the field. That is where he went to to find out that some some minerals commission boss at the district level had drunk with uh, appetite, soaked <laughs> with appetite. <laughs> so it's it's it, so, it, my brother. The point is, we are not serious as a country. Mm. It's not that we can't make the small scale mining attractive for the youth mm -hmm. to work. And you know one thing, it is a work. That the people in court without certificate that they say, mm. oh, you don't have certificate, we don't have job for you. After they 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 do everything for the party to come to power, they say, oh, you don't have certificate, we are not going to give you job. Small scale mining, we don't need certificate, so we can make it attractive mm -hmm. for them to operate in environmental friendly manner, guide them to create jobs for the people. All what they need. It's good policies, mm -hmm. guidance, monitoring, and ensuring that the rule of law works. works. That's all we need. And that's what they didn't focus on. They were focusing on money, money. Yeah, because it, yeah, and, it comes to, and it comes to that. Um, a call, uh, a call, uh, uh, what's his name? It was he? The guy who was just arrested, the central MPP central regional chairman, yeah. and um, Doctor Frimpong Manson had a no, fight. Frimpong watching. Yeah, somebody just <laughs> called me and told me that I keep calling him Frimpong, Frimpong watching. Yeah. So, okay. so the the issue is um, this is what happened. There was a fight between the two of them. No, you're getting the wrong one. There was a fight between the two of them at um, Frimpong Watin's office. And the fight was all about something which you can't even understand. And we have footages, and we are waiting for our leak to send us those footages. The funny thing is, they were fighting because Professor Frimpo Bwanting thinks that Ekwe Uzi is not doing what the party wants. And that is simple. And that the reason why the president pushed this um, agenda of Galam say and all that is because they were supposed to make enough money to support the party mm -hmm. and that there wasn't enough money coming and he professor from Pom Watin thinks that Ekwe Uzi and his clique like um, Charles B. Sue and the rest were pocketing the money mm -hmm. and that um, noises or uh, complaints he's getting from the Jubilee House is that nothing is coming through to the party that's why a fight broke out in professor from Pom Watin's office mm -hmm. now professor from Pom Watin orders the CID to go and pick uh, uh, Echo up because he told the CID that Echo is involved in the missing excavators. Ladies and gentlemen, we are jumping into the missing excavators conversation and that is just the basis for that conversation. You're still listening to Loud Silence Radio and TV. My name is Kevin Echo taylor We're going to take a two-minute break and when we come back, we dive straight into um, the excavator issue. This is Loud Silence Radio. <laughs> Ghana, we move to address this issue. 
by initially placing a two-year ban on small-scale mining upon my assumption of office in January 2017 in order to fashion and implement policies on how to sanitize the sector and ensure that in future small-scale mining would not damage our environment. We had to train some of the small-scale miners in responsible mining and find alternative livelihood resources for others who were engaged in illegal mining. Our efforts have begun to yield dividends. Some of the heavily polluted rivers are showing signs of being restored to health. And recently, there was a lot of excitement. Fish were seen again in one of the most famous rivers of our country the Ancobra River, after many years of turpidity. We are determined to strengthen the regulatory framework for mining so that illegal mining, i.e. Galamse, does not reappear. Fellow Ghanaians, my name is Solomon Osu from Denver, Colorado, United States. But I'm in Pristia now, Pristia Western region of Ghana. This river is River Ancobra. This is the river in Pristia that Nane Kufuado went to South Africa and lied to the whole world that this, world, uh, this river has been restored and we have fishes swimming in the river. Can fishes live in this river? Fellow Ghanaians, this is River Ancobra. He mentioned it. River Ancobra have been, um, has been restored. This is River Ancobra in Pristia, where small scale mining, illegal mining, is actively going on now. The Chinese people, information I've, I've got now is that the Chinese people are still working. They work somewhere here. They mud the water, and then you see the water running, going this way. See? Uh, open it. If I talk, I don't know if you are in so it's not yet. First, I'm going to say, 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 I'm You're welcome back to Loud Silence Radio and TV Network. My name is Kevin Ekobedu Taylor. I am your host on the extended version of With All Your Respect. I'm in the studio with Solomon Owusu. Solomon Owusu is a mining engineer who is based here in the United States. He has been an advocate. He's been fighting from day one. He wants to get wants the government to get things right when we say we're going to be fighting Galamse or small scale mine or whatever. He's here in the studio with me. Now is the second part of our conversation. We are going to have a quick um, conversation about the missing excavators. Solomon, um, let's make this straight. Straight. We don't need to... Yeah, before then, can I make a quick announcement yeah. about... Uh, no, you're going, to, you're going to do that. Oh, uh, yeah, the funeral. Yeah, we're going to do that before you leave. You're going to, don't worry. Sure. And also, you know, when I was trying to get to you on Saturday, <laughs> you were so, so busy. busy yeah. And I know you are you are mourning, actually, but you make time to fly here. Sure, sure. To Then I'll, I'll make you talk to your loved ones and how they can get to the funeral. So it's, 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 it's a done deal. But let's talk about the, um, let's talk about the missing excavators. Did you see this coming? Ah, uh, why not? I've seen it a long time. What I saw... Two years ago, mm. you know, that is what the MPP people have seen now. That's why I was trying to caution them. I started from the party level all the way to Chairman Freddie Blaise's office mm. to complain about what was, because I have men on the grounds who knew what were happening because they were seizing their excavators, right? Their excavators. And they saw that they were selling them. Mm and renting them to people to do Galamse again, to engage in Galamse operations across the country and also outside the country. Some of the excavators, I heard they are in Burkina Faso now. 
<laughs> oh, I'm telling you. They flew to Burkina Faso. Burkina, uh, they had wings. They gone to Burkina Faso. This is not like they in confirm. This is but this the real. Excavator. They cross the borders, and they are in Burkina Faso. I'm telling you. So the question is, before they cross the border, mm. what documentations mm -hmm. did they show to those at the border? To the customs guys yeah. before they because the excavators were seized. Yeah. And then the small scale miners had their papers. Yeah, they have documents. They had the, yeah. They had the documentations, but the Operation Vanguard and the Galam sub guys had the key of the excavator of the excavator yeah so they had the key but without the paper how could the excavators travel Leave across the, country. the border that is a big question so this problem is going to affect some custom guys yeah some top guys i will not mention them the names will come it will come one it has one. just started yeah and i was glad when i heard that they had arrested a crowd look why they have spoiled the matter because it's going, to, is going to release information in the coming days unless they find a way to silence him i'm telling you mm. i've spoken to echo just a few weeks ago mm. and he said a lot of things that this is you know i'm i'm on a, a, you know a media show and whatever i say i should have evidence yeah there's a personal conversation between you and him personal conversations and the names he mentioned so now that they've arrested him, I believe no Echo Echo is, is also a hardcore. He, Echo, Echo, Echo was a hard guy. Echo is a hard guy, right? You can guy, hard guy. He's not going to give in like ah, that. Ah, you want me to go alone? We all go. That is what will happen. So let's wait. Let's wait and <laughs> I have the names on on my phone, test and phone. I can show you after the show. Mm. The names are there. But one person. Whom everybody trusts. Oh, he Ghana. Said this, 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 this. He has about seven mining sites, Galamsey sites. Echo told me. People seven. trust that person. Seven. And some of the excavators were working there. At that person's yes. site. He's a big fish. Everybody knows him. I will not mention the name. Everybody knows him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he has a gray hair. He's Kamitela. <laughs> <laughs> he has gray hair. He has a gray so hair. So many people with gray hair in Ghana. Uh, 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 give him small. Uh, give him small. And, and, and he's a world renowned something something. A world renowned. <laughs> something something. 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 Mm. He has about seven sites. This is serious. Galamse. So. For a call to be arrested, I thank God. You you will see what will happen in the coming days. Yeah, then then there's, <laughs> there's, there's another journalist at Peace FM who has been arrested. This brings Don't me worry. to the issue of journalists and protecting or or being the shield man when it comes to stuff like that. The journalist was arrested on what basis? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't have facts about that. Okay. Yeah, I so he was arrested on and what in, basis? on his in the statement he gave the investigators, he said that. He used to work with the Operation Vanguard. And then because he used to go to the field with them, he established a relationship between himself and the guys, the, the, the Galamse people. So what happened was when they, they seized the excavators, what he did was the guys came to see him and then he would be the middleman. And what he did was they put the money in his NIB account, 50,000, 55,000. Then he would, the guys would take it out and they give them back their yeah, whatever they seized. A journalist. A journalist who's supposed to be out there talking about these things and defending the people and fighting for the rights of the people. A journalist who is supposed to be the mouthpiece of the voiceless. That is where my problem is. He's a journalist. You know, people like those who are not genuine. It's true. How many Ghanaians have attacked that journalist. How many Ghanaians have lambasted? No. The but they were lambasting me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Solo GBD Nekamanutum, take some and keep quiet. I said, no. It's not about me. Yeah. It's about the people, millions of people who are suffering. I'm just one person. If I take something, that's keep it. Quiet. Yeah. I will enjoy it, but millions will suffer. So I would rather reject it and fight for the people. That is me. And if you do that, Matthew chapter 5 says, you will be insulted, you will be frustrated, you will be threatened and all that. And that is what I'm going through. But he said, at the end of the day, you will be vindicated. And then the 
the victory crown or something, something yeah. like that. Because it's it's long time that I read the Bible anyway. So that is that is that is what is happening now. Why didn't I take money? Yeah. I could take something, but I decided not to not to engage in those kind of things because the little that I have, where I'm coming from and where I am, it's okay. Even if I, I don't get I, I any keep telling more people, blessings. I keep telling people. Asa, we are here. We, you see, we are here. We have family back home. Yes. We have our family here. Sebi, Sebi, if something happens back home to any family member or our friends, it will hurt. But at the end of the day, we are here with our family. Yep. So why should we... Are we crazy? We are not crazy. We are doing this because of Ghana, of the same... And the same people will turn around and attack you. Attack you. Because of what we have come to see. You know, Kevin, I've traveled to, to different places. Yeah. And do uh, if you watch the news file, uh, the Imani guy, what is it? Franklin Kujo. No, not Be uh, Bright Simmons. Uh, no, is it? No, the, the other guy. Bento. Uh, Bento, Kofi Bento. Yeah, Kofi Bento, yeah. yeah last, last Saturday, he said he went to Aspen. Mm. And then Aspen is a billionaire place that they ski. Yeah. It's ski. a mountainous. Yeah. Do you know Aspen is in Colorado? Mm. I drive less than one and a half hours to Aspen. Aspen is in Colorado. I, that's why I tell you, Colorado is the hub of mining. Nevada, Colorado, Arizona, and all these places. The western side, you are in the east. I know. I'm yeah. in the east now. Yeah. Western side, that's where mining is. Yeah. And according to Kofi Bentel, people were doing artisanal silver mining. According to mm. Kofi Bento, Atizana, I, he, he posted a video of that some time back, right? Oh, we have a lot of them on YouTube. Yeah, you were going somewhere, you were traveling. Oh, no, 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 that, oh, that's different. That was my area then. Oh, oh my the, area then. The oh. There is gold mining there. The, the water bodies are clear. Everything. It is there. It is yeah. there. It's not that I just made it. It is there. Yeah. Why can't we learn what they are doing and do same in Ghana? If you have revolving. And people can mine around it without polluting the water. The water body. Can, I, 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 I mean, do you think we can have the water in this state? We can do it. According to Kofi Bentel, he went there, asked them, why are you mining here while the billionaires are having fun? I said, no, that's our work. But we make sure... We don't we, pollute anything. We don't pollute anything. Yeah. We work under strict Condi uh, yeah, regulations. regulations. And that is what... I plan to help Mr. Amewu to implement in Ghana. That's the secret. Mm. I had personal conversation. Mr. Amewu is a nice person. Look, if we have five of Amewus in Ghana, just five ministers like Amewu, Ghana will change. No, we didn't a twinkle of an I'm telling you. Some people say he's an Ewe. No, it's not about Ewe. I'm an Ashanti. Somebody that I was fighting with is an you know Ashanti, 100% yeah. Ashanti. Yeah. But if you are Ashanti and you are doing the wrong thing, we have thing, to tell you. I will tell you, I will not support you. Yeah. Amewu was doing an excellent job, but people don't like the truth. That is the problem. Mm. Look, that's why I had a personal conversation with you. I said, Oh, Solomon, if you can get mining experts, Ghanaians abroad, that will come and help. Why not? Bring them. I'll be happy to support you. Amewu. That's why I got it. You know, I go for conferences and all yeah. that. I gathered professors, doctors, mm. consultants, top, top industry and academicians in the United States here. Some are watching now. Some are watching because I told them I was coming here. United States here, Canada, Australia, South Africa, Norway, and Ghana. Some top mining executives in Ghana. If I mention some of them, <laughs> you know, they don't want... Yeah, their names to, to, yeah. be, to, to, to be in the media. 30 of them. When Amewu saw the list, he said, wow. When Minerals Commission boss, Mr. Ade and Chibu Esiaki, you know, yeah, he was in AGA, the time that your dad was owning the gas light, where you were selling appetition. Yeah. <laughs> Kennedy, <laughs> what's your dad sells appetition? <laughs> Kennedy, light. Kennedy, yeah. The day that I, I heard that, I was shocked. No, no, it's gas light things. was one of the the biggest clubs around, right? Yeah. You know what? No, Kennedy is not okay. Kennedy is not okay. You know, he doesn't. I'll have pay fun. for his medical pro <laughs> uh, uh, problems. It's fine. I'll pay for his medical problems. <laughs> anyway, so 
Mr. Adan Chibuase had worked in AGA for a long time. So he has experience and he knows most of these people. So, wow. How, he asked me at, at his office, how did you get all these people? I said, oh, sir, don't worry. We, the young guys, because of the internet. Yeah, we connect yeah, easily. We get connected yeah. and we fish for. So they were ready. We put structures in place, everything. And I may would agree that, no, we should come to Ghana, do investigations, understand the problem. Because we can't sit in abroad here and, just and make, say somebody yeah. is doing something in Aspen. Maybe the Aspen, the you know, the geographic location and the rules and everything Conditions are different. Are different yeah. So why don't we go to Ghana and study our system, understand the operations, and then come and help? That was Amewu. That's why I went to Ghana to spend three months and wasted sixty-three thousand dollars for no reason. That is why I began to fight them back. Mm. If a cabinet minister a sector minister had agreed because i didn't know interministerial committee no i went to ghana because of the ministry of lands and natural resources and the man gave me a car he gave me fuel and we decided our hotels and everything you take care of you so. take care of it just to help Charles you said professor from point said no way you are not going to the field every data that you need i'll provide for you from in the office, office. I said, what but if I needed the data from the office, I will stay in the US. It was just WhatsApp, WhatsApp. <laughs> or email, right? Yeah. I will just stay and send the email and then get the data. But the point is, what quality control and quality assurance measures did you put in place to pick the data that you are giving me? Mm. Because I'm going to give the data to top notches, yeah, top Ghanaian mining espresso in abroad. So I should make sure whatever. I'm going I've to seen send it to them. myself. I've seen it myself. Yeah. I've made sure it is the right thing. It's not about money. We didn't charge the government anything. Nothing. You can call Mr. Me. Anybody watching can ask Mr. Me whether we charge any consulting fee. Free. Free. Professor from Paul Boatin, according to Charles Bisu, said, no way. And it turned to a fight. Mm -hmm. And they brought Dr. Nade Day to convince herself. You are all part of it. Part of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. Those you who, don't want the right thing to do that. The dedicated do that. ones who yeah. should make sure the right thing is done. In they Ghana. don't want. They are the people who support nonsense. It's true. You see, so after I went to the field myself, because he, they threatened me with uh, Operation Vanguard um, uh, brutality, but they don't know. We, David, David, we, I mean, I mean, I mean, no booze. No David, I mean, I'm not scared say, of things like that. I mean, you, you were that abuse. <laughs> Gaslight by Kevin Taylor. Me, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, man. Tutuka boy proper. Or was it said, take Tutuka boy. Yeah. So, you those things, move, yeah. Yeah, no. You, you, no, no, no. Those things are, are past that level a long time. So, I was, I was, I was shocked that Charles B.C. was tr trying to threaten me with uh, Operation Vanguard brutality. Charles B.C. I said, apart from the Itron, I live in America. Yeah. Right? And if anything, no. You, when they said, oh, the court, I said, look, Kevin is an American. <laughs> Do you think I, I'm a United States will allow this nonsense to happen to, it's, you know, anyway, we, we will come to that. So when I went to field and saw all those things, I didn't start to bash them. Mm. That is what people don't Understood. see. Yeah. No, people don't know. They, they, they thought I just started bashing them. For no reason. I went to Mr. Mehu's office and he would testify that. And then I told him, sir, this is what I've seen. This is what is happening. Charles B.C. and all those people, but when I went to the forest, what I saw, I said, Solomon, hmm, you let's see a way to approach it. Yeah. I said, okay. And it's like I could see that he knew already, but it was difficult for him for to. Him because yeah. he's a government official. He, he, somebody yeah, somebody he employed him. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I said, eh. Hey. So I went to. I think I started from the party office. Mm. I went to look for Chairman Freddie Blay. <laughs> Straight. <laughs> Freddie Blay. Straight. And then I called, you know, when I was hosting. Freddie Blay, we are still waiting for the buses. We don't know where the buses are. You, Freddie Blay. <laughs> when I was campaigning for Ronaldo on radio, 2015, like the way you are yeah. sitting here right now, there was a serial caller from Ghana. Very good guy. He was speaking very well. And I was MPP, so I was allowing him, giving him more time. That guy was Freddie Blay, one of 
um, assistant. Yeah, of, of, of uh, a chairman Freddie Bray's assistant. And then he directed me to chairman Freddie Bray's house. Yeah. So when we went to the house early morning, before he woke up, we, we were, were there. there. I show him documents. Say, oh, okay, okay. I'll investigate. Okay, okay. Give me three days. I said, no, my time is limited. I need to go back. Next three weeks, I'm going back to the United States. I've spent almost three months here. So, in fact, Chairman Freddie Blade did well. After the three days, I went to meet him at his office at Asalam Down. Mm -hmm. 9 30 p.m. And then when I got there, he said, Oh, uh, I've, 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 according to them, it, it's not true. I said, no, chairman. So no, 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 no. I'm not going to accept this. You see, you, the young guys, oh. you are trying to tarnish people images. Said, oh, chairman, I'm telling you the truth. Said, oh, no, no, no. If you had come with any other problem, you tell me. I'll, 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 I'll assist you. He was ready to help me with any other thing apart from the Galamsey matter. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, also, wow. one of the bosses, oh, the bosses are not coming here. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, really? not not bribe or anything, but he was no. Nah, no, I know, I know. I, I, you know, I was a party executive. So those uh, times, uh, yeah, uh, abroad. So he was ready. And I said, no, no, no. I didn't come for anything. I came because of this. So if you are not ready to listen to me, okay. So from there, I didn't start bashing. I contacted lawyer Ayukwu too. He doesn't want me to mention his name in but public. Today, I'll mention today I'll mention it. I... Because I have to make sure everybody understands what went yeah, to, on. Yeah. You need to let people know. He's a very good ambassador. One of the finest ambassadors yeah. we've got in Ghana. He's yeah. in Canada. He's the, you know... Canadian ambassador. Yeah, okay. The Ghana. Ambassador. Right. So I contacted him that offer. This is what is happening. Say, ah. So I showed him some documents and no. Let me direct you to... Why? Vice President's office. Wait. So he made arrangements. It didn't work. <laughs> the, the guys, I'm sorry, Gideon I'm Boakon, from, Gideon Boakon, that guy, he prevented me from seeing the Vice, Vice President. President. After that, I contacted Education Minister, Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe. He gave me, he gave me Gideon Boakon's number. I, I didn't have his number. Education Martin Minister gave, gave me, he tested Gideon Boako's number to me that I've spoken to Gideon Boako, call him, talk to him, and let him make arrangement for you. I said, okay. I'll call Gideon, oh, okay, all right, give me three days, let me see what I can do. After three days, I called him. He didn't pick up. Yeah, I called him. Uh, I said, eh. okay. So I went to Dr. Ayarega. He's my good friend. Yeah. And then I said, Doc, this is what my people are doing to me. They've been frustrating me and all that. Ah! So I showed him, I, I, I presented the whole Ayariga thing. Ayariga of the other side. Ayariga uh, APC. Okay, Hassan. Hassan APC. Yeah. They're, they're, I don't know, they're flag bearer. Yeah, yeah, the presidential candidate. Yeah, Ayarikov. <laughs> Ayarikov, yeah. And he said, No, Solomon, this is not about MPP or NDC mm. or AP. This is about Ghana. What you have presented to me make a lot of sense it yeah. can help wait give me a second he just put his, his phone call lord Kome. jubilee hmm. house hmm. director of operations yeah lord Kome. he called him i didn't know they were all friends oh. <laughs> we, we, no, we we fight but but they are parties they, 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 i call lord Kome. Uh, president mahama <laughs> they, they are all friends they are parties yeah they drink whiskey together so th mm. there is no way you can do something and why not knowing? No, no, they know. They all know. It's circulate. Yeah. Okay. So when he called Lord Kome and he said, Ah, Lord, it's oh, you know, they, they have some terms. And then he explained them the matter. I said, No, the guy is right here. I know this guy personally. He has interviewed me from America yeah. twice. I know him. He's MPP. So he's going through frustrations here. Please, if you can make arrangement for him to see the old man himself. Ayaga wanted me to see the president, president. Father himself. Yeah. Who's a, he, he's, he's a direct, take, he's a direct he, guy. He's a direct guy. Yeah, he doesn't yeah. he, um, tolerate nonsense. Yeah. Either the president or the chief of staff, according to Ayaga. Yeah. Lord Kome, I spoke to Lord Kome. He gave me the phone. I spoke to Lord Kome. Well, oh, I'm in Tamale with uh, old man. So when we come uh, in three days, yeah, call me. I called him, he picked. I spoke, he said, oh, give me tomorrow, after tomorrow, that's it. To today. <laughs> <laughs> so, ah, 
What is going on? <laughs> and I said, look, I won't tolerate this. I will bash these people. <laughs> That's where I started. Oh, that, I get yes. it. Yes. You see, so you had patience. You I got had the patience. Pen. Because it's my own party. Look, yeah. I have loved MPP from 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 childhood. Yeah, we have all, yeah. From 1992. Yeah, yeah. So I've loved the party, and it was your difficult. mom was um, your mom was uh, the Tutuka organizer. Yeah, yeah, I know. Tutuka, you know, boss, we have the Obasi circle, Tutuka circle. Yeah, 1992 when MPP went first. My yeah, my mom. Yeah, I know. Adansia Cha and Tehawa yeah. and all that. There were like five women who were the the least for MPP. So my house, they used to call it MPP for fee. Yeah, you know MPP for house. So this happening is tough, man. So I said, what? Why should I go through this? Like tossing, I said, no, I'm not a kid. After all, I'm a professional man. Yeah. I'm a mining engineer. I've decided to leave my work, my education, my everything to spend three months here, and I've spent about sixty-three thousand dollars. It could buy a, oh, yeah, a, oh, a, yeah, oh, yeah, a, yeah, something. Oh yeah, 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 a house in Obuasi area, Accra, no, Kumasi, no, but no, yeah, yeah, so I'll get somewhere. So yeah. I'll get somewhere. I wasted that money. I said, eh. You people will not go scot free. Wallahi. That's where I started. I started writing publications, bashing them on media and all that. And then they reported me to the CID boss. Not regional CID. The, the, not this CID. Tiwa, Tiwa. Mami Tiwa do down quite herself. I'm telling you. She, she she might be watching because I told her. I tested her. That <laughs> that I'm going, and then she, she, she said that can be Dilla boy. She's not my friend. Mm. And do you know why? She, yeah, she became my friend. I didn't know her. So when they reported me to her, she called me one morning. And one thing about me, I pick every call. Yeah. I don't say this is uh, foreign. foreign call now. Or, or no, no, I pick every call. But if you if if I pick unknown call and you start talking nonsense, I, I just, just take it off. Me. <laughs> <laughs> so she said, Am I speaking with Solomon? I said, Yes. This is Mami Tiwa Arudankwa. From CID headquarters. Oh, I've heard about you. How are you? <laughs> Say, well, I've seen your media publications, your radio comments about some top government officials that, uh, you know, I think we need to invite you. And I said, oh, yeah. What? Really? I'm telling you this. You can call her right now and she will testify. So I said, okay, when should I come? So oh, if you can come this morning, that'll be fine. It was about 8 a.m. I said, do you have WhatsApp on the phone that you, you he, called, he called me? me yeah. I said, yes, okay. I'm sending you three, inform uh, three information. After that, if there is a need for me to come, let me know. So, okay. So I fly some audio, some video, some document to her. Ah, it took blue. It took blue. She read. After 30 minutes, I've not heard anything from her. And I call her. Oh, Director, I'm ready. Should I call? So let's make it afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this guy, say, oh, you're funny, right? All correct, madam. I want to come. Wait, you no, you wait. T -t Today I have time. <laughs> you, you know, you know, I came here for business trip, yeah. and my business meeting is tomorrow. But I have time today. I'm explaining everything in to total. Yeah. Then twelve o'clock is afternoon, right? Yeah. 12.02, two minutes after 12, I call her. Oh, madam, I'm ready because I'm traveling tomorrow. Mm. Oh, let's make it in the evening. Hmm. And I said, okay. 4 p.m. this evening. You called her. 4.05. I called her. Oh, sorry, I've, I've, uh, I had some meetings. All what day. is this? But you told me I should come in the morning. Oh, let's make it tomorrow. I said, no, I'm traveling tomorrow. I'm going to do some food work. If you know, you not let me come. Tell Just me. let me know. Yeah. So no, no, no. Tomorrow I have time. You come. So okay. The next day I called him in the morning. Said the meeting will, will continue. So let's make it evening. And I said, I'll be at your office 4 p.m. I will not let you give me time. 4 I'm PM, coming there. I'm coming there yeah. with my laptop, my phone, my documents. Oh, cool. come, come, come. 4 p.m. Oh, the woman is very nice. Yeah. When I went there, he said, come to my office straight. There is some nice police lady in front that... <laughs> Took that. you there, right? Oh, nice, 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 so, nice, 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 nice. Oh, in fact, <laughs> she welcomed me. Should I give you a drink? This, this. 
oh, in fact, the woman is nice. So when I went there, she brought another CID called Mr. Afu. Mm -hmm. And then Mr. Afu was taking them in. So I said, you know, I have some... <laughs> You have your own gadget. I know you have your devices. Yeah, <laughs> I have my devices. We all have. We, we, it's very important. <laughs> so I set it in such a way that if any nonsense happens, yeah, people will see what's your, happening. Your people were monitoring that gadget from here. Yeah. So I, I switch it on, put it on the table. They didn't know what I was doing. Now these people, they don't know. They don't have an <laughs> idea of the work they do. Trust me. Ninety-eight percent of the security guys, well, the CID guys, well, they have no idea. So. Of what because everything that I said, everything that I recorded, everything. Yeah. So if they had come to say anything different, I would, you, yeah. you know, expose them. But the woman is nice. Yeah. Nothing of that sort happened. So I started and I showed my document, lap, uh, my phone, everything. He said no. No knowing he was, you know, just thinking of resolving the matter. Mm. Because we were all in the same party. So he advised me as a younger brother instead. And then he was saying... The media bashing and all that was the one that he wanted to. She didn't end. want. And if I have anything, I should give it to her. She would take it up. And in fact, I liked the woman. Okay. From that day, that's why when you were bashing her, I was. No, like, I had oh, to bash her because God, of the tech radical girls. Please. Yeah, yeah, the tech radical girls. It wasn't her fault. Don't hold brief for her. She was the head. Don't hold brief for her. She Kevin, was the head. You own this place, right? Yeah, it's your own. Yeah. You are the chief executive. Yeah. If you have a director. And there's a major problem, and you have a meeting, and collectively, you all agree on something, and you say, Director, you Take are responsible. Up. Take it up. Is it coming from you or from the group? That is where people don't know. It wasn't her fault. They had a meeting. So whose fault was it? <laughs> You, you are saying, you, you, if you are ready to defend you, her, you need to tell no, us. I'm not defending so I'm just speaking the was it? They had a meeting. Who so and they all came up it? that let's say this mm -hmm. to calm them down. She went out to make this to make the statement. Good. And she was just a ceremonial something. <laughs> something. I mean, I'm telling you. All right, all right. So, we, we so please don't bash that woman. I beg you. Okay. I hear you. <laughs> anyway, let's let yeah, let's continue. Um, so after that, I think some uh, somebody also called me and talked to me and all that. But that time, my time was, you know, due. So I traveled back to United States, thinking that they would change yeah. and do the right thing. So my guys on the fold were giving me the information, information, not knowing things were even worse because Akwakwa Champagne, you know, he's gone. So nobody will bash us in Ghana again. He's not gone. knowing I'm here, I monitor everything. everything. And the bashing was going on. And it went to court. And from court, we don't know what is happening and this and that. What I will tell Ghanaians, especially the youth. Yeah, I think we should get to that point where. Yeah. Is that we should be careful not to engage in anything that will influence us to prevent us from doing the right thing. We shouldn't follow money. We should insist on the truth. You go through frustrations. You go through intimidations, threats, it's, police, yeah. court, audit. But if you know you are doing the right thing, continue to, to do it. it. And there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. And that's what has happened now. Yeah. It it's is beginning. manifesting now. Yeah. Now to the excavators. Yeah. Kevin, do we have wings? Do excavators have wings to they, fly? They don't. Even if they have wings, like aeroplanes. They still need fuel. They need fuel. They need to be sparked. Yeah, and the airspace, that <laughs> even to fly airspace, you need certificate to fly airspace. <laughs> Planes that don't take off. You need a lot of, you know, a lot of things to go through. When the man said the excavators had disappeared. That statement alone. That statement what? alone. He should have been sacked right from there. And, and arrested. arrested. Why? And arrested. After that statement, you should have been fired there and arrested. Because what made him get that courage to come just say that and walk away? Because they don't respect the people. Now, to President Kufado, whether he's watching or his people are watching or whatever, he told us to be citizens and not spectators. Yeah. I have done my work as a citizen. 
you have done your work, Kevin Taylor, as a citizen. Most of the Ghanaians who follow Galamse have done uh, their works as citizen. Now, it's up to President Ekufuado to do his work as the leader. Mr. President, that ends this up. is from Solomon Owusu. He said the citizens have done their work. He has done his work. Other people have done their work as citizens. It is up to you, Mr. President, to show us that you can be the leader. If President Ekuf, because why should you keep the man who is involved and then to influence the investigations? He can influence. Why should he report Ekuwausi? He is the he leader. Is part of it. He, he is the leader. Yeah. So he should have stepped down for investigations to go through so that the public could go with reports yeah. and all that. If he is still there, he can influence investigations. That's very true. He should step down and then be fired after, because I know after the investigations, he'll be fired. I know. <laughs> I'm telling you, he'll all be right. fired. Uh, we and if the president fails to do, I do not, I've never bashed President Ekufaru before. Yeah, I, yeah. All my videos, I've bashed Kennedy in Japan. I don't fear him. He insulted me. I threw it back to him. Oh, yeah. That's very important. I've bashed some people. President Kufuado, show me one of my videos or audio that I have attacked him. No. I never, even when I was MPP and against President Mahama, I never attacked him. Yeah. But I was also saying he is corrupt, like the way everybody we was saying. We all said it. Corrupt. Oh, we know evidence. Confirm, uh, uh, yeah. Incompetence. We all, we all said, we said it. it. Yeah. But I never attacked him. I never insulted him. I've never insulted President Kufuado. And I will never insult him. Yeah. But I'll bash him. <laughs> <laughs> if he doesn't sack uh, Professor Frimpo Boatin, trust me. He's not going to sack him. And I will bash him. Ekufu is I'm, not look, going to sack I'm him. I'm giving him two weeks. <laughs> two weeks is enough. Two weeks, two weeks at least. If he, yeah, look, we know what happens with Charles B. We all kept quiet. 